okay so we are live now sure sir sure so good evening everyone uh, in the today's talk we will talk about uh, the one of the paper which is operating strategies of buses for the mass evacuation so this paper was published in journal of the safety science which is a q1 category journal and uh, this was published in January 2019 while I was doing PhD at IIT Delhi itself. So in the today's talk, I will discuss mainly about what is the background or the motivation means what is the motivation behind such a work? What are the kind of the model or the role of the operations research in the evacuation or you can say in the generalized way? What is the role of operations research in disaster management means how technical interventions can help in making the better decision in in the quick time so that life of people can be saved and then i will talk about that how we solve this model because you will see that such a model is a np hard problem which is quite difficult to solve and then we have proposed some kind of the heuristic and then we will see that the findings and implications that how uh, these kind of models can help the decision maker through the case study i will show you that what is the efficacy of such a developed model and at the last i will show you what is the future work that we can how we can extend such a work so coming to that in a, in an in an any disasters that is going to happen or any disaster that we are seeing the disaster management cycle can be divided into mainly these four parts and it's well known framework you can say the preparation response recovery and the mitigation so these are the four steps but this work is mainly towards there can be two kind of approach that we uh, that anyone can follow it's mainly the proactive and the reactive and as per the indian government and the ndma rule they are shifting to the proactive strategies where they say that we have to plan before the evacuation means that we have to plan something in the preparation phase itself before the disaster happens that how we can respond in an effective way and in the least amount of time so that we can save as many life as possible so there are mainly two things that are involved in such a such such kind of things mainly in the evacuation i'm talking about particularly in this paper it, at least the main focus in is on the evacuation of this disaster management cycle which is a crucial phase in any emergency response but what we are doing we are planning the evacuation prior to the disaster happens means that event has not happened yet but we have to plan for such evacuation so but and in the main focus is we need required generally require a travel mode once there is a you see that the distance is too long that they need to shift it to other place so we required some kind of mode will be there so what we have focused in this work particularly is to use the buses but this work can be generalized to incorporate the other public transport mode also and i will tell you in the coming slide why we have focused on the public transport rather than the private vehicle that people might have owned during the emergency and they need to be shifted to the safe place so you see that now currently everywhere in the news you are seeing that there is a fight between the ukraine and russia so what is happening is that our indian government has uh, started operation ganga to evacuate people to those who are there our indian national who are there in the ukraine so in any such kind of evacuation planning there are two things that are required in the nutshell i can say this there are many things but there are two crucial things in any evacuation planning this will be the resources and the schedule resources means that how many uh, airplane or such kind of the resources that are required how many personnel and how how many people will go these four ministers have been assigned so, so these kind of things are the resources and the second thing is the schedule when the plane will go and what time they, they will reach where it will go such kind of things are there so this is the main step you can say in the nutshell the evacuation planning if you say to somebody what is evacuation planning you can tell them it's the resource planning and also what will be the schedule and if you see here so what happens is that this image taken from the twitter what happens is that due to some firing uh, this bombing this railway track what happened that people were shifted from ukraine they were going to the other nearby countries and what happens that uh, this rail track this was not working so what they have decided then to move use the buses there and from the bus based evacuation such kind of things i will tell you in the further slide what is the importance of the bus based it's just to make the context of the paper such that this bus based evacuation is a necessity that it should be there we should consider it it, it makes a important it makes more sense to consider such kind of things okay so now if you see here the process of evacuation planning if you see as i've told you the resources and schedule but mainly it can be divided into five steps so for suppose i will consider first an example just to explain it suppose there is going to be some kind of bombing you know already that it has not happened yet just you got the information that there is going to be bombing in this area 
So you just first step is to find the impact zone that where is the impact zone you need to shift it to all the people to the outside to the safe places. So these all are the origins means these all blue points actually is the origin. The, all the people need to be shifted sorry from this red point. They will not need to go to the possible safe destination which are all these green point. And what is the first step is to know the impact zone. Second is to assignment of evacuate to the different shelter. And then you need to know the traffic routing. If they are using any kind of mode, then they will need to decide what kind of the route they will take. And we need to do the routing assignment. And then there is evacuation schedule means that either you give priority to this area or to that area. And the supply with the goods is once they are reached to the shelter, you need to do such kind of planning. So these are the steps that are required in such a uh, such a evacuation planning and we can make model for all these steps. You can use operation research in all these five steps, whatever you want. There is a supply with the goods. These are the humanitarian logistics where people say that how many inventory you should keep in different hospital where you should make the different hospitals. Even the evacuation schedule is something you can find out through such kind of the mathematical model. You can make the model and find that how we can find the schedule, how we can find the priorities. And also these are the first, second and third also you can you can relate it that these are related to the operation research where the decision variable is that all the origin will be assigned to one of the destinations so that the it's it need to be done at the prior that is what this paper will talk about it's all about the planning work and in the, our work the main focus is for the transportation network and the routing problem means we will decide that how many resources are required and what is the what is the schedule of those resources but what we have considered here is that these are the advanced notice of the threat is available as I've already told you that this is something we are doing is as a proactive strategies. We already know that there is going to be a disaster. And one more assumption I'm making here in such a model is that there, the resources are limited in number. So we, we don't, uh, we, if we have abundant of the resources, so what will happen is that you can easily find out what will be the schedule. You assign all the buses to all the path and then they will take. But what happens in such a regional evacuation resources are always less. And you might have seen in the news that what happened that the in the Ukraine once Indian was trying to do trying to go in the trains. They were not allowing them because they have the limited resources and they want to make sure that first their citizens should reach the safety first. So these kind of priority and all those things is in the nutshell describe you what are the different kind of modeling you can make in such a evacuation planning what are the different there is too much scope that we can use uh, in such kind of disaster management at least this is just one phase i've shown you which is only the preparedness phase then you can make many models in the response phase where you can say in the real time how you should respond once the disaster actually happens, how we should respond. But this is not a part of this work. That is a different study altogether. So let's see what kind of the different models and all those things are required. But first, I will emphasize that why we focus on the bus based planning. So what happens in the Hurricane Katrina that in the 2005, they have seen that many people don't have any access to their personal vehicle and then they need to go from the, the, the hazardous place or the dangerous place to the safe place. They don't have any kind of mode. And what has been observed in such a hurricane is that all the buses were flooded. It was found after the study that they, the buses were flooded. So this is the trigger point where these bus based evacuation planning actually originate. They, the people start shifting to such kind of the bus based evacuation planning. Also, we will focus on the large scale uh, evacuation, which is the regional evacuation. So you can make sense that these kind of planning is required. We should consider such kind of the planning and uh, there were also the example in the COVID-19, which is not related to these kind of the disasters. But what happens is that they have used uh, many buses so that to, to bring the migrant worker back to their hometowns. So they, the buses were used and also the school students were shifted to the buses. So they you can consider them as an evacuation. Also, and another example is that in one of the evacuation, they have seen a plenty of buses that were going. So overall, we can say the bus based evacuation planning is crucial and and we should focus on that. So coming to what is as, as I was talking a lot about the bus based evacuation planning, let us see what is bus based evacuation planning. So it's a variant of a vehicle routing problem. Vehicle routing problem, you can understood it something like a school bus and there are a school bus. It need to pick up many students from different places. So the bus authorities needs to decide that what route they will follow that means that these are the two points the buses should go from which point to other point means what is the path of that 
bus should be so that all the students should get in the minimum possible time or the minimum possible cost. So this is a variant of a vehicle routing problem. But what is the difference here is that the network structure is completely different. You, I will show you in the next slide what is the network structure. And also the objective is different. So what, what is in the school buses, you might consider that the buses should be used in such a way so that their operation cost is minimized. But what here is the difference is that you have to focus on something where the time is minimized, means that in the least possible time, all the people are getting out. So the closest of the vehicle routing problem, which is similar to a bus based evacuation problem is a split delivery multi depot vehicle routing problem, which is basically the, the there are multiple depot that are involved and the split delivery means that the any bus can come rather than only the single bus, the two buses or three buses can come to pick up the people and that need to be shifted to the different places. So you can say it's related to a split delivery multi depot vehicle routing problem. And what we have done, we have formulated it as a mixed integer linear programming. So this problem I will explain in the next slide through the graphics, then it would be more clear to you. And as I've told at the starting that you need to decide the routing and the scheduling of buses that what route they should follow at what time, at what place, at what shelter it should go. So in this framework, you can see at least that what is exact problem. So once the evacuation order is issued, then there is a evacuation demand like in in the in the operation ganga case you were seeing that around 1300 uh, indian students were there that need to be shifted so first is that the order is placed bring them and then the second step is what is the demand that is there then there is something in the regional evacuation is a shelter capacity each shelter has a given capacity then there is a vehicle capacity that each bus can accommodate and then there is an available time that all the people should be shifted within that possible times so these are three constraints you can see the main constraint which are there and then we have to find that this is our decision variable which is the scheduling bus fleet so the selection of shelter which shelter it should take and the assignment of routes such that in the minimum possible time you are evacuating all the people there are many models which are currently available in the literature on the bus based evacuation planning or you can say it's basically the timetabling you can say that the timetable you have to make and also even if it's related to the split delivery multiple depot vehicle routing problem then what is the novelty here so what is the difference we have done here is something we have considered the special temporal variability it means that the different places have different uh, available time it means that suppose you consider a given area where there are two nodes these two nodes have different available time it means this need to be evacuated in 90 minutes this need to be evacuated in 150 minutes it means if they have different spatial location different geometric location then they need they might have the different evacuation time. That is something different we have considered. And the temporal variability is something you have the given available time, all these different places means, spatial temporal means different places we have considered and different time we have considered. And also there is a resource limitation means that if you are bus, if you are using the buses, the buses need to make the multiple trips. So it need to go from one place to the other place. It need to come and go and back. So these kind of things are happening. So it makes it, more complicated model so that you can see you can visualize it that suppose you are using 100 buses 100 buses and suppose there are 10 pickup points and 10 shelters are there so you can you can just visualize or realize it that it, it may be complicated to assign each bus with the different multiple operator trips so we, just to visualize it and just to make it more clearer you can consider it something like this there are different pickup points there is this depot from where the bus is coming and then it's need to go to the different shelter and then again it's going back and through so it's making the multiple trips and it is important to have the operating strategy so now the title should be clear to you we are finding the operating strategies of buses for the regional evacuation or the mass evacuations hence special temporal models with the multiple trips are formulated and what we are doing as i've started my lecture with uh, sorry my session with something that you need to find out what are the different number of buses that are required means the minimum number of buses that is required to completely evacuate all those people with the minimum resources if you are keep on increasing the resources then it's not possible through the budget wise you know? so we have to find something that uh, what what is the number of buses that are required how to use them bus effectively so that 
it it minimizes their evacuation time whoever is there so that as soon as possible we get them out completely so this explains you completely what kind of model we will have similarly i will explain in the next slide what are the different model but let us see what these three types of models that are there so first model is, as I said, it's the resource requirement model, which is uh, what is the minimum number of resources that are required? In our case, it's the buses. You can use this other model, these kind of model also in something you say that the, I have the e-commerce, I have a given demand, I have a given supply, it means I need to uh, take the people, I have the given orders from the flip card, I have to completely give like 100 orders at different places. I have my serviceman, the delivery man, how can I make the, what is the number of minimum number of delivery men that are required? You can also use in such kind of the waste management also some things you can say, what is the minimum number of vehicles that are required and also in the education and whatever domain you want, but this can be something you can use as a base model, which says that what is the minimum number of resource that is required now? Okay, so second thing is that the second model is once you know the number of resources, then you have to find that how to use those resources effectively so that in the minimum possible time you are getting them out completely. So second model is regarding that. And we have touched upon something which is the minimum modification strategies. What happens in such evacuation, there is always the uncertainty is there. Uncertainty means that you can't fix the demand. You can't say that if I have to evacuate 100 people, it will be 100 people. That is not the case. It can be something like 100. And now, so, suppose you consider again the Ukraine example, they started with 1300. But what happens that people are still coming, these our Indian nationals are still coming, so the demand is not fixed. So they have to consider some kind of the uncertainty as well. So how we can consider in such a model the uncertainty also. So these three kind of model I will explain in not in the complete detail. I will explain all the constraints and the objective function. I will explain that, but uh, I have not. I will not go in in the solution methodology part completely in that part. My main focus will be to explain the model to you that what kind of the different constraint objective functions and all those things are required. So whenever you have to formulate a model, there are four requirements that are there for the formulating a model. So first being that what is my objective function? So in such a case, the objective function is the minimum number of buses, the first thing. Second thing you need to decide is the decision variable, that what are my decision variable? I will explain you in the next slide what is in there, but I'm explaining in the general way if you have to start doing the mathematical modeling because I'm not aware of the complete uh, audience we have. I'm just explaining the steps that are required. First step is to know the objective function. Second step is to know the decision variables that what is the decision that I need to take. The third step is that what are the different parameters that I have for a model. Parameters means that the fixed constant that I that, that is available with me. And the last one is the constraint. So let's see the first model, which is the minimum resource requirement model. Okay, so you are seeing this model. The animation is not working here. Otherwise, I put animation because somehow uh, the Wi-Fi is not working here. It's through the LAN connection. So you can see here the decision variable is is something you have to find out the x and s means that suppose i have to find the minimum number of buses then i am assuming something that i have plenty of buses i have like you can assume anything i have 1 million buses 1000 2000 any buses i have then i have to find something the minimum resource means out of those buses what is the minimum buses that i should use I should pick from those different resources that the dots different buses. What is the minimum number of buses that I should use? So there are two kinds of variable I've defined here. One is the X. X is a binary variable which says that whether the trip of a bus is happening or not means that whether I'm using that bus or not, whether the first trip is happening, then I'm using that bus. Otherwise, I'm not using that bus. If it is happening, then it will go to which route? Because if you see here, let me go back to this slide. So I have to find this yard. I'm assuming here that I have a plenty of resources. Suppose 1000 resources I have. It may be the case that you only require 100 or 200. I don't, I don't know yet. I have to find that number. What is the minimum number of buses that is required? So I am assuming here that I have the plenty of resources with me at only depot. It will not be the reality. You can assume it as a pseudo variable where you say I have the plenty of buses because you are doing the planning. You can assume whatever you want, at least at the planning phase. So you have, you are assuming this, then these buses will go to the pickup point. Once it reaches the pickup point, they will go to the shelter. 
once it reaches the shelter it again need to go to an, another different pickup point so that is something you need to decide and it will keep on moving till all the complete pickup point are satisfied the demand of the pickup point are satisfied so now coming back to the model so you can say that this is my uh, two decision variable whether the bus is bus trip of a bus happens means whether it's being used if it's being used in its trip j means I have defined something as X, Y, I, J. Y means the depot, the depot which is the starting one from where it started D. Then it, it goes to this I means the bus. There are suppose 100 buses at a particular depot. Then they need to go to the different trips they are going, whether this trip is happening. If it's happening, it's going to which route? That is something we need to decide. So these are the two decision variable here, the X and S. So as I've told you, the first thing is to know the objective function, which is minimum number of buses that are required. And these are my decision variable, which is something the X and S. Let me explain again. So uh, let me show, okay. When we work, no, it's not working. So just let me explain here again. The X is something whether the bus is being used, that if its trip is happening or not. If it's happening, it's going to which place. Anna? So you can see here the constraint. These two are the definition constraint, which makes sense that if the J trip is happening, means suppose if the bus is going for its first trip, it's happening. Then only second trip will happen. Matlab ki agar wo trip bus mein use ki gaya, if I am able to use that bus, then only the second trip will happen. It will never be the case ki pehli trip hogi or tisri nahi hoi. So in that way, you can say it will never be the case that first trip is happening, second is not happening, third is happening. That should not be the case. So that is something, the definition. Again, this is something, again, with the definition, which says that if, if the trip is occurred, then only go to one pickup point because it can go to only one pickup point. It's not possible that it is going to several pickup point. Now, if you see in this diagram again, so if this trip is happening, Agar trip ho rahi hai, so it can go only to the one of the pickup point. It can't go to at the same time, it can't go to one or two. So that is something you need to make sure through the constraint. And other constraint I've already explained you the demand constraint and the shelter capacity constraint. The demand constraint is for each pickup point P. You can say that if it's going to that route, I will just multiply it with the capacity of the buses. So it, this is already incorporated it because I am summing it up over all those values. So this is already incorporated, the demand constraint, the shelter capacity constraint, and also there is available time constraint for each pickup point. So this is for each P. You can, you can just refer the model. I've just taken some of, I have not even written here for all I, uh, this is something you can easily do it, check it from the paper for all Y, I, and J. This is, this is not a single constraint. These are the set of constraint for all Y, I, and J. So this is something where, which is shows that if the first trip is happening, like I assume at the depot, there are thousand buses at the abundant of resources. If I'm using its first trip, then where it will go. So this is the first model. Then there is model two, which will which will find that you need to know that minimum exposure time model. So in the minimum possible time, you have you have to equate all those people that are present there. So you have what we have done here is that you have to minimize the maximum evacuation time. Suppose there are five pickup point. Our pass smart pickup point had a cut time for so minute, do so minute, ten so minute, five so minute. So if I am minimizing the five hundred minute. So what I'm doing is here that I'm minimizing the maximum possible over all those times. So this is something we are doing. So min max is generally difficult to solve. So that is the complexity, one of the complexity that is there. And also this min max leads to, there are some constraint we need to transfer and then the model was non-linear. Non so we have to put some additional variables. So this is one of the things that we require many times in doing the modeling so if you have a linear uh, formulation if you can formulate a linear model then you can make sure that its local solution is always a global solution because it's itself a convex programming so you can say once you find one of the local solution then you are sure that this is the global solution so main focus is to linearize so always try to look that if you can linearize any model then it makes more sense to linearize it rather than going for solving the lone linear through any kind of meta heuristic or available other methods or the tool books, we, toolbox which we use generally. So these kind of things are there. And also it's interesting to see uh, that in such a case that whether it's always going to the nearest shelter, 
जब उसको जाना था पिकअप पॉइंट से तो क्या हमेशा नियरेस्ट शेल्टर पे जाना इट मेक मोर सेंस टू गो टू द नियरेस्ट शेल्टर एंड आल्सो दैट व्हाट इज द इफेक्ट ऑफ फ्लीट साइज ऑन द इवैक्यूएशन ड्यूरेशन सपोज माय मॉडल प्रेडिक्ट 60 आई एम इफ आई एम यूजिंग 70 इफ आई एम यूजिंग 80 सो व्हाट विल बी द इफेक्ट ऑन सच काइंड ऑफ द टी मैक्स और दैट दैट इज आल्सो मेक्स इंटरेस्टिंग टू सी है ना सो दिस मॉडल इज समथिंग इट्स सिमिलर टू द मॉडल 1 still there are demand constraint capacity constraint and available time constraint but there is one more constraint is something this ct is something we are saying as a cycle time which records that if it's making the multiple trips in each trip what is the time and it's it's summing over all those times so i'm not deliberately i have i have removed that how to find this ct but you can refer to the paper that shows that if it's going to the different trips how you can sum over all those time and find the cycle time means that you can relate it to that uh, it's doing the cumulative time that suppose it's going to first point second point and all those points so how we are finding that is something we should uh, get from there so this is model 2 and now let's see so there are whenever we are able to formulate a model so there are two kind of methods that you might have seen one is the exact methods which are which are already available toolkit like simplex branch and bound and all those methods even these bender decomposition all those method you might have seen then there is something heuristic and the meta heuristic so what happens with this heuristic is that you are not able to get the solution in 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 a given time then you shift to some other kind of models you you these are the problem specific model these are the problem specific algorithm we make something like greedy algorithm and all those algorithm they don't ensure that you will reach the final optimal solution but they ensure that you reach near to the optimal solution so one general question that arises that how we know that if that it's a good solution so we can find something bound to a solution ki hum ek solution ka ek bound nikalenge the dual bound or all those things so from that bound you can say that this solution is good enough we are not able to solve in a in a reasonable amount of time then we shift to some other kind of uh, algorithm which you can say the heuristic and similarly there are meta heuristic which are not problem specific these can be applied to general uh, methods which are available yeah, i hope i hope you might be aware of all those uh, classification but what we have done in this paper is at least we have used the heuristic so what this heuristic does is that we need to find uh, so i have said that it can go the number of trip so we need to find out that how many trip a bus can make hai na so we have a uh, different pick up points how many trip a bus can make so what this does is that we need to find uh, the good bound for that j we need to find a bound for that j that how we can find so what this heuristic was doing it was intelligently reducing the set of constraint so what it does is that there are too many constraint j can g j you can take any value na we don't know what will be j j means that number of multiple trip a bus can make so this heuristic we have formulated one of the heuristic which is similar to the branch and bound method which says that each time it will go to the minimum possible time matlab wo depot se niklegi aur kis pair mein in which pair it will be the least possible time you can see in this so wherever it's the least possible time it will keep on running to that part वो एक बस उसी पे चलती रहेगी और कितनी पॉसिबल ट्रिप्स वो कर पाएगी वट इज द नंबर ऑफ पॉसिबल ट्रिप इट कैन डू इन सच ए केस इज समथिंग वी हैव टू फाइंड आउट सो वंस वी हैव दैट वन सो दैट विल बी ए गुड अपर बाउंड फॉर द जे we can find through that सो यू कैन रेफर टू दैट पेपर फॉर लुकिंग थ्रू द मोर डिटेल ऑफ सच ए ह्यूरिस्टिक and then we have the third model which says that the minimum modification strategy is in uncertain environment what happens as i already told you that evacuation is always some kind of the dynamic the demand is not certain even sometime the bus driver will not present and all those things happen still now we have formulate model 1 and model 2 i've shown you model 1 and model 2 what this model 2 does is that it will exactly tell the driver that you have to go from this depot what is the route that you have to follow and what will be your sequence that is something we have already trained the driver but what happens in such kind of uncertainty now drivers are already trained but now the uncertainty is there now we need to make sure that under such uncertainty we need to make sure that we change least amount of thing that is possible thode se thoda change usme kare and in with those least amount of change we should able to find feasible solution 
So here goal is to find a feasible solution rather than an optimal solution. What happens in kind of the uncertainty? There are many ways to solve uncertainty. There is stochastic optimization. There is a robust optimization. All those ways are there. But what we are focusing here is that we focus more on the feasibility. Feasibility means that as soon as some uncertainty is there, what is the least possible or the minimum possible change we need to make in the plan such that all the people are evacuated with that uncertainty consideration. So this is known as a minimum modification strategy. We are doing the minimum modification that is possible and just bear with me for 10 more minutes. I will be able to finish by then. Okay. So uh, this is something the approach for such a study. So you can see here that there are the possible scenario. The uncertainty set is given to you that demand can go from range like 100 to 150. You know that uncertainty set. You have to make an uncertainty set out of that. So there is a change in the input data for a given scenario you. Now we have to find. So this is similar to the destroy and the repair method. Something is destroyed. Your some toy is destroyed and now you have to repair that toy such that it should do the basic functionality so that is something the destroy and the repair method so you have to find the two kind of variable this s star and su so these are the first stage and the second stage variable so this su is for a for a given scenario the uncertainty set u and s star is something you have to find for the complete case that 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 is going to be for the overall you have to find the robust solution is something you can say it as the s star so this this model is not a part of this paper this is a, some other paper which is i was just for the sake of completion i have given here so this model is something its objective function is that you have to find the modification and whatever the change is that is going to happen in the trip so suppose Earlier it was going to sequence like 148. And now I have to make a change with the 148 and 6. So that is something you are changing. You are changing something. So we have we are minimizing the maximum recovery distance over all the scenarios. So that is something we are focusing here with the given all the constraint for each scenario. You means there is uncertainty set you and then we are finding that one okay so we are trying to minimize the disruption due to such uncertainty means the driver need to make the minimum possible changes so that still the feasible is so still the solution is feasible so that is something we are focusing there so what we have done we have formulated a case study for the nuclear accident and we have considered a case for kakrapar atomic power station the reason for choosing such a uh, such such a study is that there they have already done the initial study where they have find out that what will be the possible shelter what are the different kind of area that need to be evacuated so we already know the parameters so that is why we have used this as our case study and as mostly there is rural area near the nuclear plant so they require the public transport so it make more sense to have such a case study and we have considered a scenario where there are eight picker points and there is a different kind of demand that is there means that the population we exactly know from the census and there is one uh, depot we have considered and then there are three kind of shelters which were there and these have different time varying from 90 to 150 minutes so these are my pickup points these are my shelters this is my depot and we need to find the sequence of the buses means you can see one of the sequence of a bus it goes to first pickup point then to a shelter a koti a koti to fourth pickup point then it's moving something like this so we have to find that what is the number of buses that are required first thing and what will be the sequence for such a model so that we are able to evacuate within available time all those demands so that is what we 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 have shown as a case study so you can see the result the result here shows you that this is the result of model M1, which says that by using the model, we were able to get if the complete population is dependent on the public transport, you will be able to evacuate with the 60 buses and that too they are making the multiple trips. And if it's 0.75 means that we have considered the different sensitivity values, that different values that demand is there. So you can see that the computational time for such a model is very small due to our this heuristic that is given in the paper and then you can refer that and you can see that model can provide the quick result in such kind of the emergency scenario and they can incorporate the changes also while 
they they are running on the time means that the actual disaster happens still they need to know what is the extra number of resources that are required so with the modification in the model we can also find that in the real time how it can also be helpful and the second thing is that this is model m2 where the available time was 150 minutes and we were able to evacuate with the 60 buses in around 190 minutes and this is the overall uh, aggregated result which says that the 16 buses are going to village number one during their first round and these are the different shelter means out of those how many buses go to village one 16 buses then they go to eight buses go to shelter one four goes to shelter two and four goes to shelter three so that is how it also tell you something about the shelter planning it will tell you at each time how many people will reach what particular shelter so this can also help in volunteer management kind of thing where you can say the resources that are required at different shelter and what time they will reach the particular uh, time they will reach that shelter okay so overall the summary i can say that this can help in the resource planning which is the initial requirement for any such model that what are the number of resources that are required we have developed the optimal operating strategies including the trip sequence available buses that is required and also we have considered something about the uncertainty so they can help in the strategic planning but also we have just, just touched upon the operational planning and it can be served as an initial model or the model need to be refined to to consider the proper traffic dynamics we have not considered the congestion and all those things is not considered because you can consider it as a initial level of model working towards that and what we have planned further is that this is something city bed so city bed means the citywide bus based evacuation planning decision support system where you are incorporating even the simulation so that the flow dynamics is represented the congestion and all those things are there the initial solution is incorporated to the optimization and we can consider many what if scenarios and try to help the decision maker in taking those kind of decision and within a decision support system there are mainly three kind of things if you know that there is uh, the database collection the, these can be the different data types means census data can be there and also the buses data and also the dis there will be different module and one is in the decision support system one thing is the database management system other is a model based management system where different kind of model the optimization simulation will be there which will help in dispatching and fleet control module and lastly there is a knowledge based module that is there and and the connection of all those is the user interface which uh, we are planning to do in the future that is the future work so uh, thank you uh, any any questions are welcome please uh, thank you lakshay we will now open the floor for question answers uh, if anybody has a question please feel free to go ahead and ask your question just say your name first please I received in chat. I was saying, let me let me go to the chat first. I was seeing one of the questions there. Yeah, I think Atul has asked a question. Yeah, yeah. let me check it. What is this question? Okay. So should should the routing be such that it covers all the pickup point as constrained? Because in case of an any contingency, how we uncertain that people are present at what pickup point? So what happens, uh, Atul? Uh, what happens is that this is a good question. So you ask is that generally what happens in those rural areas is that the, all the people will go to the community center or the schools that they that is already the designated place that is there. So they will go to the designated place and through that designated place then we can we can determine that what will be the demand at the pickup point Anna, should the, you know, yes sir actually uh, uh, if you have designated all the community center at the yeah. pickup point so mm -hmm. in total there are 12 pickup points so we don't know key at which pickup point the people will there or will not be there so, so we have to cover all of them yes 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 absolutely we have to cover all of them but what happens is that they will go to the nearest pickup point. So what happens is that if you go to the airport, there is always one of the the pickup point. You will see at any airport when you go next time. Please check. There is a there is a point which they say that the pickup point or something, the evacuation point. If this some kind of emergency is there, there is a some point they said that the gathering during the emergency they have to reach at that particular place. So this is something we called it as a capacity planning. 
So this is a different research where we say that all the people will be told earlier that if some evacuation or some kind of the evacuation is required, you all need to go at that particular place. We don't know the demand you're right, but at all the picker point, the buses will go from that part. Okay, okay. Thank you. This is a capacity building that's completely different from this, but this model is generalized. You can assume these kind of things also. There are the model available in the literature where they consider even the pickup assignment, which which zone will go to which pickup point and how many pickup points are required. That is also again a different research. If the zone is very big, you can't make just one pickup point. That is again the operations research. You can find out that what will be the number of pickup point required what will be the location of that so that is why we have used from one of the earlier research where we have considered that these are the eight pickup points different shelters and just to show the efficacy of the developed model okay so basically it is already determined yes, yes absolutely we have not considered this in our model at least so main focus was for the resource planning and the constraint which was mainly the resource constraint and the time availability constraint that what how we can do that now the main thing is required how we can club all those things and make some kind of the decision support system still it's way too beyond the reality still this you can say it as a these are the preliminary model and how we can extend those models so that we can uh, make something with with even these uh, the real time condition you have to consider suppose some the radiation level or some flood is happening then some of the road will become inaccessible then even you you don't know the route and all those things need to be considered that is a separate research okay so thank you okay thank you thank you Any other questions? Yes. Okay, there I'm seeing in the chat box. Have some some such techniques used for evacuation in Odisha. Okay. Yeah. So what happens, uh, Professor Benwit? So what what they are doing in the in Odisha is they are planning for these uh, routine kind of disaster that is happening. They have already built such system that they are able to evacuate through the capacity building. Even the lakhs of people they are they are in the last. I was I was reading they were able to evacuate 11 lakh people, and they have built such a system that that they can evacuate all those people from that particular place with those kind of time. But what we want to consider here is something that that some kind of the dynamics or some kind of the constraint is there, the time constraint and all those things which we were trying to consider there, sir. Okay. Hello, uh, hello, sir. This is Shivam. Yes, yes. Shivam. So I want to ask a query since uh, meanwhile you were asking Atul's query. So same query uh, I was inquired with that. Uh, what if the thing is uh, always disturbed? Sorry, can you repeat, please? Uh, what if when the routing is always disturbed? For example, in case of natural disaster or something. Uh -huh. So we are not sure. So uh, do we keep it as an as an assumption or uh, uh, as a constraint? What yes. we do actually in that case? Yes. So in such a model which we have developed, as I said, these are just an initial model for the decision support system where we are building, where we say that uh, now now there is flooding, that water has already reached that particular, and the road become inaccessible. So in all those scenarios, we need to go for the simulation where you say that suppose my this road become inaccessible. Now, what will be my contingency plan where I can do that is something that is the response phase. So what we are talking mainly about the planning phase where, okay. where also we need to consider that these uncertainty, how we can incorporate those them best and find the robust solution. But yes, you are right. This model is not for the as applicable in the response phase abhi direct nahi lagta so you are you are right so uh, one more thing sir uh, yes yes uh, can this model be also be used for uh, for example uh, for a particular case uh, like in a flood or uh, any any disaster 
so where we usually supply food material and other resources so uh, is it applicable in that sense too not or in yeah. or in that we consider cost uh, analysis also cost factor so first first requirement in such a model that that is what exactly i am doing right now so first requirement in such a model is to know the location of the relief relief supply that where will be the different relief supply that you can put suppose the warehouse where is the how much is the amount of food supply you need to require to store and what is the amount that you need to buy from the third party that is required so you need to know that through when they are when they reach the shelter so that is the last part where we, you have to supply them with the goods so that is something where you say that one of the decision variable is where you put those warehouses how many supply do you put on those warehouses and what happens if some of the part become inaccessible even the at what happens is one of the warehouse also get affected mm. what happens in these kedarnath and all those all those assumption of the model will fail in such a case if some kind of mm. such disaster happens so we have to consider those things also okay yeah thanks thank you thank you yeah. and it was a very wonderful presentation thank you thank you so there is a question in the chat box from sri harsha okay. sir could you provide some info on how spatial temporal models fit for such problems in a dynamic scenario if you can also make a note on spatial temporal model yeah so this special temporal model as i've said the dynamic scenario we have made something known as a robust solution where we say that the robust optimization what happens in these uh, disaster is that you don't know the distribution what happens we don't know the past uh, from now they are the collection mechanism all those ai machine learning they are able to give us that what could be the distribution and all those things but what happens generally we don't know these kind of things so we have to make something for the dynamic scenario we have to find one of the solution which is known as a robust solution so i can give you one example of the stochastic and the robust what happens in stochastic case suppose a person is going and you you say that you can capture the reality through the distribution and now what happens a drunk person is going you say that this is its distribution and now what happens in no case you want that this drunk person on the road get hit by the truck so that is something you require the robust optimization in the robust optimization you say that you know the uncertainty set and you have to find the solution which is feasible in all that complete uh, set so that is something the robust optimization we have tried to consider the, the the best possible way to consider this dynamism and try to incorporate that we have considered three kind of dynamism suppose the bus driver is not available second some of the route become inaccessible and third the demand is not known with the certainty so what we have done in this part is that the demand and that is going we have considered the box uncertainty where we say that the demand can either go plus lambda or it can go minus lambda so that is the simplistic way we have tried to consider the dynamism in such kind of the model and further if you want to ask that the dynamic in a way that travel time changes even the time for reaching from the pickup point to the shelter that will also change even the capacity will also reduce there will be both the public transport there will be some private car will be there all those things required the what if scenarios it requires the simulation which is just a experimental arm of such kind of the models i think we just have time for one last question i think dr minakshi has a question sure Uh, good evening, uh, Dr. Lakshya. I am uh, really sorry. I am in a situation that I cannot turn my camera on. Sure, and nice. I must congratulate you for the nice presentation that you made. Uh, you. I just had uh, not a question, but I just wanted to see the future of this research, and that's where a question came to my mind. Do we have some disaster classification which says that uh, that given that this situation falls in the severity level high, and this situation falls in the severity low? so for each model or maybe for each severity level we can okay. develop some model which is like a button one for the most severe one button two for the relatively lesser severe one sure sure 
So sure. do we have so, that kind of a classification for the disasters? Yes, yes. So let me answer the first part which you asked. The first part is something, the future of this research is something we are trying to do now is, as I've said, we are trying to build a decision support system which mm -hmm. incorporate these remote sensing and all those things which, which you have the realistic picture also. And within that decision support system, there will be a model-based management system which will try to give the best way of, based on that information. So what happens in such a model you might have seen is that we have used many assumptions so that assumptions fails in the real real life scenario yeah, but definitely. once we have from the real life the actual picture or the big picture now you know the big picture and in the operation phase you have to find you have to find for each resource you have to assign it to the task means that so many people will ndrf they they compose a team they say that 10 people will go to that particular place and all these kind of things so how we can use that in the optimal way so that is the mm -hmm. first part and now considering the severity part so what happens is that in terms of evacuation so they say that based on the travel mode they have mm -hmm. classified one is that classification which is either through bus train or you are using this and secondly is something you can say based on the distance means that they need to go the short scale or the regional or the city wide so what is the type of the evacuation that is required so first of all it completely depends the impact zone so they have to find the impact zone and if the impact zone is too large so then they then they 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 get the third party or they get the more team and then they tries to see that the situations are going out of control we need the backup and that is how they send the, their these kind of the contingencies teams are there and then they try to go in that way so still it's way beyond that we have not reached till that level but what we are focusing now is on the decision support system and that is the next level where you are saying that even the severity means that in our model if i try to say the severity means the radiation level or severity mm -hmm. means the flood level so mm -hmm. if it is reaching in 20 minutes now the severity level is too high it will reach yes. in 10 minutes so in that way yeah. our model we can incorporate the severity also right 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 so yeah. seems like in the near future you'll be able to incorporate this aspect also so, i'm trying that <laughs> okay great thank you thank you thank you All right, so I think we'll end the Q&A here now. Uh, thank you once again, Professor Danira, for the interesting presentation. Thank yes. you, everyone, for attending. Thank you, thank you, sure. I would request all the students supposed to attend the AGM to please stay back. Everybody else, please feel free to leave. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so I've...